Okay, so many people believe that the French and Indian War did not contribute to the American Revolution, and many people think that it's imperial policy that starts in 1776. But actually, if we go back to 1754, we could see how events in the French and Indian War will lay the foundation for the American Revolution. One of the things that you're going to see on your next test is this document. Does anybody know who the author of this document was? Benjamin Franklin, which we know him from Poor Richard's Almanac. And he is, he is pointing at the colonists that they have an issue. Normally in nature, we see a snake like this. No, right? Most times you'll see a snake all membered, right? All together and you run the other way because it's deadly. But if you were to see a snake like this in nature, would you keep on walking on your trail? Yes, because yes, the snake is what? Yes. Dead. Hooray. Right? But <laughs> I'm fearful of snakes. But Benjamin Franklin's pointing out something here. That the colonists, if they were to combine together, would they be deadly? Yes. But because they're not together, are, could they be taken over? So they need to join, or what is gonna happen to them? And so if you look at the parts of the snake, they all have names, right? So the NE refers to New England, so tell me the New England colonies again. Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, New Hampshire. So what is this NY? NJ, P, M, B, N, C, S, C. Wait, did I say them all? Which one are missing? Georgia, Delaware. Delaware. They didn't show up. And so he's also pointing out to those, those colonies that you're kind of not helping us here. And so what we're going to look at is if the colonists would have lost the French and Indian War. What he's implying by death is that they would no longer be British citizens, but they would become what type of citizens? Subjects, Subjects of who? Uh, the, king. the king of who? France. France, not Britain. If they were to lose the French and Indian War, they would become French citizens. And would they lose their rights? Would they lose their government? Would they lose their freedom of religion? Because now they would have to practice what? Catholicism. And so Benjamin Franklin saying, if we don't all come together, we will then become French subjects, and that's what the death is. So we're going to look about what started the French and Indian War, and that is our first question on our study guide, is what were the French and the English fighting over? They're basically fighting over this area, and this is where the war is going to begin. They're fighting for this area, which is called the Ohio River Valley. I'm just outlining it here. This is the Ohio River Valley. Eventually, when we get to the new nation, we're going to refer to this as the Northwest Territory. So this Ohio River Valley is very lush. It has a river on it. So if it has a river on it, do people want to settle here? To do what? Fish, farm, okay. Um, but why would the French? The French are not settlers. They have forts and they bring in traders. Why would they want to have this river valley? Who are they trading with? The Indians, and what are the Indians getting from the river valley? The fur, because they're, they're hunting beavers. And the beavers like to hang out on the river, okay? The river rafts, okay? And so we're seeing that this is where the clash begins. Because the French covet this area because the Indians are getting the fur from the beavers on the rivers. The American settlers, you have to understand our problem. They're in a very compact regional area, right? And every 20 years, their population is doubling. Do they have enough land in this area? So they want to push west. We're going to see that a guy is going to go out to this area that is actually going to start the French Revolution, or the French and Indian War. And his name is George Washington. George Washington goes out west. He is a surveyor. Do you understand what it means to be a surveyor? They're surveying the land, right? Mm -hmm. And seeing where people are going to settle. And so George Washington has been sent out to survey this land. And he's going out with some soldiers. He's going out. Is it into British territory or French territory? So how does that look when he's taking soldiers to survey an area? And it doesn't look good, right? So a skirmish occurs. George Washington accidentally kills a French official. 
is that bad. Mm -hmm. He signs a treaty saying he does this, and this is what's going to commence the war. And we know the future, right? If this wouldn't have happened, we would have never had this war. We never would have had the American Revolution, which what would have never happened. America would have never become America, and he would have never become. So this is going to start this like avalanche of events, right? This first event is what's going to cause. So we really have to look about who's fighting who, and what are the advantages. Who has better soldiers? Y'all know. The French, who has a better navy? The British. So we're going to look at how their advantages, their strengths and weaknesses is going to shape the war. So the French, they have a larger landed area. Why is that an advantage? More space, but do they have? Do the British have to conquer a lot more? Yes, and would wear them out. They also control the river valley, which they control the river, so can they send your men quickly? On a boat versus on land. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna move a whole lot faster on a boat than on land. Did you get it? No. Did you get a paper? That's why you're wondering. They have an allies, which are um, their Indian allies are the Huron Indians. And um, I just remembered they're the Huron because they surround the Great Lakes, and one of the Great Lakes is Lake Huron, after this Indian group. Also, like y'all said, they have a better military. They have good leaders. And they also have an alliance where they could ask for soldiers, and they could ask for money and aid. So looking at this, do they have everything to fight a war? Yes, on land, which is going to be, so that they should win. But there's also, this is called the French and Indian War, but in world history, you learn this as the Seven Years' War, that there's a whole war going on in Europe. And so well, let's look at the advantages of the English. The English have a larger population. They have people here wanting to fight, right? But are they trained soldiers? No. So they have quantity versus quality, right? They're like minions. They could send them out, but I don't know if the job's going to get done. They also have um, the Iroquois as the ally, and they're enemies of the Huron Indians. And they have people who have a vested interest that if they lose the French and Indian War, they're gonna lose what? Their land, their citizenship, their rights, their freedoms. And last thing y'all said, they have a strong navy. So if the English have a large population, what's the weakness for the French? Small. They have a small population because there's such soldiers and settlers. We're also going to see they have the Iroquois as an enemy. Um, they're going to focus more on problems in Europe, so they're not going to spend much money here. By this comment right here, are they going to lose? Yes. And at the start, they're winning, but because of this, they're going to lose. We're also going to see people were fur traders, not settlers. So once the war breaks out, are these people going to take up arms and fight? No. And so it's these two things that they focus more on problems in Europe and their traders are really scared of the war and they flee. That is why the French will lose at the end, but they're actually winning in the beginning. So one of the weakness, another weakness is they fight traditionally. What does it mean to fight traditionally? Well, not swords. <laughs> huh? In formations, they're lines, right? They fight in just lines and regiments. And they go to an even plane, and they just shoot at each other. So this fighting's going to be a little bit different because that's, huh? And you're going to see it eventually it's going to lead to problems when we get into the war. Oh, believe me, it's going gonna, it's gonna to lead to an oops here. So, like, was that like part of like what they were supposed to do? Like, were they no? What they're going to learn from like, the Indians? They're going to learn from the Indians that that's not an appropriate way to have a war, and they're going to use the guerrilla tactics of the Indians and fighting in small bands 
to have an effective me measure, and the French will adopt that first. But they're not going to move away from that until we get to Vietnam. <laughs> All right. Um, so the colonists gave limited support. What were the two nations, uh, the two colonies that we saw that were like, ah, not my, not my area, which we saw on the jo Georgia and Delaware. And a lot, you have to understand this. There has just been a hurricane that has hit the Bahamas and Florida. Do you see much aid happening in Texas for it? No. But when Harvey hit two years ago, was there, were there people here in Waxahachie trying to help? Because when it's in our backyard, we're like, oh my gosh, we need to do something. But when it's so far and remote, do we need to do anything? And that was Georgia and Delaware's problem. They also fight traditionally. We really know the answers of where, who, and how did the war begin. Who do we blame it on? George Washington. Old George Washington, right? He was going into what area? The Ohio River Valley. Why? Why was he going out there? Oh, he had some legal, some legal claims, right, to an area that was shaky. It wasn't even his. He goes out with soldiers. And he accidentally what? Kills a French official. Kills a French official. And this is how the war happens. You already knew all of this because we discussed it on the first slide. So we know the who. I could put George Washington, right? Where was he going? Ohio River Valley. And I think that's like the first question on your next test. The French and Indian War was a skirmish over what area? The Ohio River Valley. Okay. Um, and again, he was trying to secure shaky legal claims because really, could he claim this area? Could he claim this area? No, because whose territory was it? French. And so he goes out there with his men, and this is what leads to him and his soldiers firing upon a French leader, killing this guy, signing a treaty in French, and this commences the war. So we already know B, Albany Congress, who is the guy who made that join or die? Benjamin Franklin. And he's kind of poking at stuff, right? He's saying, how are they? Are they unified or not unified? They're not unified. And so we're going to talk about the significance of this thing. There's going to be a short-term goal significance and a long-term goal significance. I'm going to give it to you in a second. I haven't even... Americans' reaction is that some will say volunteers, remote list colonies. What were the remote list colonies? Delaware and, Delaware and Georgia. They didn't send. So now let's look at the, the significance. We're going to see that the joiner die was done by Benjamin Franklin. He's poking fun that they can't pull together. Here is our goals. Here is our significance. The short-term goal is they got the Iroquois on their side. Is that going to be helpful fighting in territory they don't know? getting an Indian group that knows the land, okay? The long-term goal, which is the irony, is that they're gonna achieve colonial unity. And I say that's ironic because what was Benjamin Franklin saying that they did not have at the beginning? Unity. unity. But now that they're gonna learn a lot from this war, that if they come together and they fight with a common goal, can they achieve? Which will set the foundation for the American Revolution. So, do you think the British can rely on American people to fight this war? So what are they going to have to bring in? Soldiers from where? England. England. But do you think they could bring in all of their soldiers over here? No, because they're having a war where? In Europe as well. So they're going to bring in their soldiers. And who else are they going to recruit to fight? Americans, the colonists, but are they going to be the best? No. So you're going to have British soldiers that know how to fight, and you're going to have American soldiers that don't know how to fight. Is there going to be an issue between the two groups? Okay, how are the English going to feel about the American troops? 
They're bad, they're slow, right? They, they can't get it together, they have two left feet. How are the Americans gonna feel about the British soldiers? Angry, why are they pushing us around, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is gonna lead us to our problem with, if we flip to the back side, it says, why was General Braddock's unsuccessful? First off, how are they fighting this war? Traditional. Traditional, so they're gonna take, what do they need to take to the war? Because they're gonna fight in rows and columns. What do they need to take into the war? They need to take their what? They need to take their guns, they need to take their soldiers, what else? Cannons, what else do they need to take? They're going far away. Horses, what else do they need to take? Flags, food. So he's gonna take all of his men from the colonies and march into French territory. Is that gonna be a very long line? Mm -hmm. So are the British troops gonna be marching and marching fast? Mm -hmm. Well, what about our Americans? Are they used to this? Mm -hmm. How are they gonna be marching? Slow. Slow, they're gonna be carrying the cannons and he's gonna go around and what is he gonna to say to his American soldiers? Huh? Pick up the pace, you're slower than a turtle, right? Come on, you scumbag. Come on, you outpost of civil. Are these good comments? No. So then how are the Americans gonna feel? Well, they're gonna get upset, they're gonna get angry. Are they gonna like the British? Okay, and so this is, do you think Braddock's is gonna be successful in fighting traditionally? And so when they get to the lines, and he's insulted all of y'all and coited you to turtles and scumbags of civilization who can't have two left feet, where does the general stand when he fights in the war? Does he fight in the front or is he in the back? And y'all are all in the front lines, and they start shooting at you. And that guy in the back has been calling you scumbags. What are y'all gonna do? <laughs> y'all gonna duck, and what's gonna happen to Braddock's? He gets shot. And this signals to the British, can they win with a general like that? And that is why the British are losing at the beginning. It is these three things. They have that heavy artillery. The French were quicker with their smaller ones. Braddock's had ill-trained forces. Who are these ill-trained forces? <coughs> the Americans. And is he being positive and encouraging, saying, oh, you got this, you just need to move your feet a little bit faster. Next time you'll probably shoot a little bit better if you just squint your left eye and see what, is he gonna do that? No. no. He's being very negative. He's being very derogatory, calling them country folk, uncivilized people, backwater people. Last thing, he is wounded because now the Americans are on the front lines because they're the pawns, right? And what do these guys do on the front lines? Do they protect him? So he's wounded. Braddock's defeat signals to the British that can they, I want you to think about generals. Are generals common men or rich men? Rich. So can they put another rich man as a general over the colonies? No, so they need to put a common man, and that's what they're gonna do with William Pitt. How do you think William Pitt, from all of these mistakes right here, what is he gonna do? Is he gonna carry the heavy artillery? No, he's gonna take on the French with smaller army. How is he gonna treat the colonist? With respect, a little bit better, positive and encouraging. And maybe he won't get wounded, right? So they've been losing the first few battles. How does that do for uh, ego for the colonists? It drops. They don't feel that they can win. They lose that self-esteem, and do they keep on losing more? And so because of this, William Pitt and Wolfe are going to have to change the plan. And the turning point is that they're going to start attacking small places. And they attack Lewisburg, and this is their first victory. And when you have a victory on your side, does that uh, do, bode well for your confidence? Then William Pitt will change the plan. William Pitt says, okay, let's attack Quebec and Montreal. Let's stop it with the small places. Let's attack the big place. Which one's the bigger place, Quebec or Montreal? Quebec. Quebec. Why is Quebec the bigger place? It's their central, this is where they're storing the military. And I don't know if y'all know anything about Quebec, 
about its geography. But Quebec is basically on a cliff. Is that hard to get into? So it's on a cliff. I had my bad cliff over here earlier. It's on a cliff, right? Can you get into Quebec through the cliff? So a lot of people have to go up the river around Quebec to get in the back door. And so are they protecting this back door into Quebec? Here's my door. And then they have soldiers here. Okay, I'm, I don't draw very well. But do they ever feel that Quebec will be attacked? No, because no, it has this geography of this cliff. But what Pitt does, he's positive and encouraging with his men. They're going to like parkour up this cliff with suction cups, I guess, or something. And they're going to attack. Did they expect this attack from the cliff? Are they even going to be protected on this side of the cliff? And so because of this, because he puts in this whole, like, we're going to scale the cliff, what do you think is going to happen in the Battle of Quebec? Who's going to win? The Americans are going to win. And now, who's going to lose? Who's going to lose? The French. The French. So Wolf, Wolf and Pitt are going to send up their soldiers under the poorly guarded part of Quebec, which is the cliff. They scale this cliff. The armies face off. But was the French army prepared? No, they didn't feel that they needed to be prepared because no one was going to come up this cliff, they thought. They thought everybody would come in the back door where it was protected. And so now the war is over. Who has won? Who won? The Americans. So who has lost their land? The French. But were there even many French citizens here? No. Because there wasn't many French citizens, the English allow whoever's here that is French, they could stay. But the French government loses its land. So this is how we still have French as a dominant language. And we'll talk more about how French overtures still remain in Canada and eventually get to Louisiana. All right, this next thing asks you, what, talk about the 10 results of the war. I've written them down for you, so you don't have to write all 10. Because I don't think you could fill it in that little space. Okay, right, the first thing is what I just talked about is the French were eliminated as a colonial power, but we still leave who here? We still leave who here? Settlers, because were they a lot or were they little? Little, okay, not in stature, but in size. Okay, um, we're going to see the next thing. Canada and all of the French territory east of the Mississippi becomes Britain's, except New Orleans, because New Orleans will go to the Spanish. Spain will get everything west of the Mississippi, the U.S. will, I'm uh, not the U.S., the English will get Florida, but don't get chummy with Florida. We're going to lose it again, okay, in the American Revolution. The next thing is the English colonists rejoice in their confidence. Who built up their confidence? Braddock's, right? Do Braddock's? It was Pitt. What did Braddock's do to them? He belittled them, right? He tore them apart, okay? Also, the colonists' self-esteem is going to be shattered about the British being invincible. And it's this idea that the British are no longer invincible, that they could lose in battle, is what's going to set the ground for them to revolt when they dislike their policies. We're going to see there's friction between England and their colonies. Who is the guy who created that friction? This who is the guy? Braddock's, right? We're going to see this snob scum idea. The Brits called the Americans the out of opposed to civilization. They treated them ill. They insulted them. And it's this whole thing that they are Americans and we are British and we are superior is what's going to set the foundations for them saying, why don't we become our own nation? The next thing is the colonists didn't feel supported financially. They weren't supporting the war. And this is what will lead to the commencement of taxation. We're also going to see disunity continue to melt. We know Benjamin Franklin was talking about that in his Albany Congress join or die flag. But the irony is that they're going to have unity. The colonists experience a spirit of independence. And lastly, land hungry Americans are going to move west. But as they move west, who is going to be out there that is going to have resistance? Indians, because they had been in this area finding what? What were they finding? 
beavers. And the, do the Americans want to covet the land that the Indians were on? So what are the Indians going to do to our settlers who are moving west? Attack. And this is going to lead to an alarm because as they attack, they're going to lose over 2,000 men. And so the British are going to introduce the proclamation line that prohibits settlement past the Appalachians. Wait, so they won land, but now what has happened to the land? Can they even obtain it? No. And is this going to get the colonists upset that they fought for a piece of land and their motherland is telling them they cannot covet it? And so this is going to commence the imperial policy. This is going to commence the dissent, the resistance. Do you think they're going to follow this? They're going to continue to move west. And who's going to continue to attack the settlers? Indians. The Indians. And so what are the British going to have to bring over to the colonies to make sure that they're not passing this? Soldiers. Are we starting the American Revolution? All back in 1754. And we're seeing the commencement of imperial policy that is going to lead to the colonists following it or not following it. A lot of this stems from Pontiac's uprising. Pontiac's uprising is going to take place in Detroit. And they're going to attack. Over 2,000 citizens, soldiers and citizens, are killed. And this is going to send shockwaves. Okay. This is the last thing about Pontiac's uprising, what it is. And then we're done. Thank you.